Hello, hello! My name is this Alexia and this is our new show on Eurodrag TV. Okay, before we start, I want to apologize if this show isn't as funny as Linda's. But don't worry, we're gonna have a few laughs. But most importantly, we're going to be covering what's happening in the world today. So, as well as reviewing all the gossip and news from the drag race world, we'll be talking to people about much more serious issues that we face on a daily basis in our community. Welcome to this Alexia's After Party! It's a new generation of promiscuous people. Darling, you are a whore. Let me introduce you to the slutty people in the club. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. So baby, if you want me, come on. You got to show me. Before we bring on our guests, let's introduce our co-host for today. Some of you will recognize her from BBC News and the horrible negativity she has received for simply wanting to read stories to children. And some of you may know her for being one of the funniest drag queens on the UK scene. And I know her for being an amazing friend. It's Ada HD. <laughs> hey Ada, could you tell us a bit about yourself? So, Ada is a hyperactive, fun-loving, just wild drag performer. Uh, but then I'm a little bit of a kid inside and outside. If I'm honest, I'm, I kind of just play myself when I'm, when I'm dressed up. I'm kind of just me dressed up in sparkly clothes and sparkly things all over my face. So that's, that's a Ada as a, as a kind of a punch hole description. I think a lot of us are still kids at heart and that's not a bad thing. Ada, just hold on there whilst we introduce our first guest. She is such an icon, known for her parties and just being funny in general. She's going to be hosting the Eurodrag finals in Oslo this year. It's Sherry Vine. Vine here. Hello, my darling dyslexia. How are you? I am so good. It feels weird not having Linda here, but I'm getting through it. What have you been up to since we last spoke? Well, since we last spoke, I am still at home in Los Angeles, but the weather has been heaven. I mean, it's literally why I moved here. And I am doing a big show on July 9th with Jackie Beat called Battle of the Bitches. And if you need information about when my next show is, if maybe you want a Sherry Vine t-shirt or help a bitch out by buying some merchandising or tipping her for all of these free comedy videos, then please visit sherryvine.com. That has all the information for everything. What's the situation back in the States? Uh, the United States right now is going a little crazy. Of course, there's a lot going on. Some of it is very, very good and important, and some of it is insanity, which is mostly coming from our government. So all I can say is anyone in the United States watching this, vote. That's the only thing we can do is vote. I can only imagine what you guys are going through watching the news. 
Sherry, bars and nightclubs won't allow live entertainment, especially in the UK, for a really long time. Do you think drag will survive? Well, I know it seems very difficult right now, especially if you're a performer and you work in bars and clubs and nightlife. It seems like we're kind of at the bottom of the totem pole of what's going to open. Like, it's going to be a while before we're back in a club performing for a packed room. But I don't think that's going to be the end of drag. Of course not. Um, I think that we all have evolved and adapted to an online presence out of necessity. And the minute that people can go out again, people are going to want to fucking go out, honey. You're one of the most famous parody queens in the world. These days, it's hard to talk about anything without someone being offended. How can we continue to make parodies funny if we can't even laugh at ourselves anymore? I do get asked this question a lot about my parodies and whether I think that they're politically correct or incorrect and does it influence what I want to do. I mean, I think anyone who watches my videos can see that I'm really making fun of myself more than anyone or anything. I don't really make fun of women. I don't make fun of, I mean, I don't really make fun of anyone but me. And if someone happens to fall into that same um, category under the umbrella of a big whore or <laughs> middle-aged queen, then great. But I, yes, there are of course things that are taboo that I won't touch, but I've never felt the need to be shocking or controversial just for the sake of being controversial. I sing about sucking dick and being a whore, and if people don't like that, if they don't think it's funny, then okay. I can totally see why they wouldn't. But luckily, there are still people out there who think farts are funny, like me. So what would be your advice for making a parody funny without offending anyone? If you don't offend someone, you're not doing it right. Someone is gonna get offended. There are people out there who don't think farts are funny. There are people out there who don't think promiscuous sex or being a whore is funny. And there are people who don't think drag is funny. So there's nothing I can do about that. All I know is that I write about what I think is funny, what I like. When I see Lady Bunny or someone else doing Jackie Beat doing a parody that's about fart or big dicks, I laugh my ass off. And that's what I've always done and I'm not gonna change that. I'm never going to wake up one day and be like, oh, let me sing a parody about vegetables. That's just not me. But there are people who can do that. And think it's funny, Jackie Beat did a parody of Adele's Hello called Jello, which was hilarious. Ada HD, I know some people have been offended by your name in the past. Could you explain why? The idea of ADHD and me taking on ADHD as a drag persona uh, is not really uh, about trying to make a joke out of what ADHD is. In fact, uh, I actually stand up for those uh, as a somebody who wants to tell you that just because you're ADHD or gay or autistic or you've got one arm, just because you're different in any way, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should be treated differently. That is very inspirational, Ada. Moving on, Canada's Drag Race was released last Thursday, and we are hooked. Last week, Jukebox won home in a lip sync battle against Lemon. Sherry Vine, what do you think about Drag Race being expanded across the world? I'm super excited to watch the Canadian version of Drag Race. I mean, it literally is going global, and I think it's great. I'm excited. I know two of the queens that are on the Canadian one, and I would say that I am friends with Scarlett Bobo, so I've known her for a long time, so I'm super excited to dive into it, and yay, Drag Race is global, great. Thanks, Sherry. It's so nice having you both on the show at the same time. Ada hosted Eurodrag in Wales, and you're gonna be hosting it in Oslo this year. One big Eurodrag family. Ada, Sherry represents very stereotypical drag queens, making parodies about dicks, farts, and diarrhea. You must feel a lot of pressure being a role model to children. Do you not miss being the stereotypical Sherry Vine type of queen? Well, to be fair, I still uh, do uh, shows uh, in uh, on stages, in bars with lights and people drinking a, a glass of Prosecco. It's, it's, it's a nice little kind of getaway to, the, uh, to my usual, which is obviously reading stories to children. Um, 
but I uh, I suppose uh, over time, if I haven't got uh, many, I haven't got many of those in my diary to be honest. But when I do end up doing them, it is quite nice, a bit of a, a getaway. It's time for our last guest who was involved in what many people describe as the world's most influential LGBT storyline in soap history. As well as playing Paul Coca in EastEnders, he's also been a finalist in X Factor and Eurovision Song Contest. I'm sorry. What's this obsession you got with my mouth? And uh, just in case you're wondering, this tan is all over. No white bits. Uh, uh, fair enough. But you are looking after yourself. You know, you're watching your sugar levels, injecting when you should. No, I'm living off ice cream and alcohol. Oh, shush. <laughs> Have you come here to drag up the past? I wouldn't want to touch your past. Make a start. Can't be away from work too long. Uh, no. You've got to be kidding me. Are you winding me up? I'm sorry, I don't, it's, it's just me. Is this a thing? Is this something you do? Yeah, no, this is the first time your man has met me. You're a tranny! Hello, dyslexia. I hope I've said that right. Oh my god, you did. For the people who haven't seen EastEnders, tell us a bit about your character. My character on EastEnders was Paul Coker. Um, he was brutally murdered and was a part of one of the biggest uh, LGBT storylines uh, in soap history and potentially TV history. Um, he was brutally murdered um, for being gay um, and was a part of a coming out story uh, for hard man Ben Mitchell. Um, and my granddad was also a crossdresser, so uh, very got very very involved uh, with the LGBT community. Um, was on the cover of Gay Times. Um, can't remember which edition now. I think maybe 2015. What was the audition for East Enders like? Um, pretty boring, actually. Um, it was. I'd. I'd. Well, to be fair, I didn't really know the show was still going. I don't. I don't really watch the show, which is kind of. Um, taboo, people always assume that you do. Um, but did the first audition, um, had a couple recalls, um, and got the job, basically, I said, <laughs> like three rounds. Um, and then all of a sudden was on one of the biggest TV shows uh, in the world, and it was mind blowing. I can't quite put it into perspective. The show is crazy. Um, and I had it pretty good, to be honest. Um, I was working with Roger and Lynn, who played my uh, grandparents, um, and they were just a joy to work with. Um, and Harry, who played Ben Mitchell, always used to <laughs> like feel insanely jealous at the fact that you know we had like this um, set that was um, well, it was like a grandma's home, really. Um, and uh, he said the dra dramatic difference between doing a Mitchell scene and then coming on and then having a cup of tea and a catch up talking about, you know, knitting <laughs> was really nice. I wish I could knit. I would finally have a talent. Now we know that you are in Eurovision. Were you disappointed it was cancelled this year? I'm gutted that Eurovision was cancelled. Um, I actually have done Eurovision before. I was a backing singer and a dancer um, for Switzerland. We didn't qualify. Unfortunately, but um, shout out to Switzerland. I'm not even remotely Swiss, but um, the singer was. So. 
Paul had one of the most powerful LGBT storylines. How did that affect you personally? And what impact did it have on the viewers? The storyline was it was huge, actually. Um, it, for me as an actor, um, when I was actually filming it, it kind of happened in two parts because, um, you know, for, for me, technically, we had a really busy week of filming when uh, Ben and Paul finally got together. Um, and then I actually went on holiday um, after that and went to Roger's 70th birthday in Greece. Um, then came back with an amazing tan um, and then had to do a scene in the coffin. And then a scene on the bed uh, with Steve McFadden and, oh sorry, uh, Phil Mitchell and uh, Ian Beale, um, Adam Woodger, legends. Um, and then that was me done, to be honest. I didn't know that the storyline was gonna um, be covered um, as much as it was. Um, it kept, it's, it was the, the impact that it had and what it did to the square was incredible, actually. Um, it was really, really powerful and definitely brought to light a really showing that, you know, hate crimes are happening t um, still today um, from fucking idiots um, and people that just assume that it doesn't. Um, and the effect that it has on not just the family, but the whole community and the fact that it can happen um, to anyone um, just from prejudice and from um, judgment um, from two people walking down the street and being happily in love uh, to then getting beat up and killed. Um, so for me, um, it's always a joy to talk about and to, you know, just bring light to um, to, to, to homophobia. Um, but also for me as a reaction, it's quite nice because whenever anyone sees me out and about, um, I always get quite a nice reaction from people because um, he was such a lovable character. He worked in a hairdresser. Um, he was just a really bubbly, confident, um, strong opinioned and just lovable and people really willed them to be together so that was a part of the tragedy is that as soon as they did get together um, they were killed and um, I, I know that Dominic Treadwell Collins wanted the producer wanted to really go for the message um, and really drum it into people that this is this is still happening today I don't think soaps really have done enough um, in that field so uh, yeah, that's kind of what made it one of the biggest storylines and I'm utterly joyed um, to have brought that to light. Ada, can you believe this is still happening in 2020? As the national spokesperson for teaching today's generation, how important is it to get this message across? Ooh, um, what a title. I mean, complimentary, thank you. I'm only doing what I just love to do. Uh, I love to entertain people. Uh, I. I'm a bit of a kid myself. It just kind of made sense, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, so uh, the fact that it comes with this ability to kind of teach people new things and let them know that just because you're different, it, there's not really a, a big deal about it. Uh, it's just an extra bonus. Um, so yes. Johnny, on the subject of comedy, you have worked with some hilarious people. And Linda, who isn't with us today, insisted that I ask you, what was it like working with her hero, June Brown, as the legendary Dot Cotton? Fucking legend. Um, and she, we were talking at a barbecue, but the thing is, there was quite a lot of music going on, and I couldn't really hear what she was saying. I remember talking to her, we were, you know, eating a burger, she do, she was obviously having a cigarette. Um, and she, um, she, she, she said to me, she talked to me, and she just started talking, and it's like, what was she saying? You know, Johnny, what, you know, what, what's funny about acting? Is that I'm, I can't, I'm deaf, I'm so deaf. Um, and she, I think what she was saying is that, that she said, you know, the funny thing about acting is that, you know, it's just reaction. You know, I'm talking to you, you're hearing what I'm saying, and then you're reacting. Um, and uh, and then that's acting, really. It's just listening and, and knowing what that person's saying. Where, in truth be told, I couldn't actually hear anything what she was saying. So 
I was actually reacting in a very fake way um, and it only really clicked later that I realised that maybe I shouldn't be an actor. <laughs> that happens to me on a daily basis. It's become part of my life now. Let's move on to X Factor. How was that experience? And what advice would you give to other European drug artists entering competitions? X Factor was crazy. I, I, again, another very severe experience. Um, working with, you know, Ricky Lake, Vinnie Jones, meeting Nicole, Simon, Louis, uh, and then the whole team, and then being on set and doing all of that sort of stuff. I'd say if any drag artists are entering into um, into the show, I mean, you don't necessarily have to be have your whole drag. Um, if you're starting out in drag, if you're trying it for the first time, don't be scared. I don't think, I think drag it has to be a, an extension of your personality and your life. I'd say just make sure that you are yourself are confident and you know what you want. And when you start, know where you want to go and what you want to do with it because things can happen so quickly and then you're filming and by the time you're done it's over um so don't be a diva um be nice to work with because if you're not it comes around and it turns around and then you're down so just you know be yourself what have you got planned for the future I've kind of taken uh, a bit of a swerve. Obviously, um, theatres aren't opening until uh, apparently like January time, um, which is quite scary uh, for the future. Uh, I did actually have um, a one-man play planned as well as um, a show that I do back home in Jersey. So having to reschedule that. Um, I was also auditioning for a show. I can't tell you what it is, but it's pretty epic, um, which is going to be a musical, should I have said, said it as a musical, I don't know, well, now you know anyway, so whatever. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from that, but it was meant to sort of start around July time and that's, that's just not happening, so just chilling out to be honest, I think, I think because the industry is taking a, a nice rest, it's nice to just you know, have a rest as well and sort of use this time to contact people. But other than that, I've been writing a bit, been writing music. Um, I'm just now looking for a producer. Um, so plug if any producers out there want to come collaborate, get in touch at Johnny Lavi. Thanks for being on the show, Johnny. But before you go, you have to tell us, what's your favorite place in Europe? Amsterdam. I've actually got not many people. I've got, got my my one and only tattoo on my ankle there. There you go. Bit of trivia information, um, which is the three X's of Amsterdam. Um, it's not it's not a porno reference. Um, it's yeah. I, got, I did 13 weeks living in Amsterdam uh, when we did dance, dance, dance. I just love the place. Not for the you know getting high and you know, getting smashed and, you know, all the rest of it from just, it's such a beautiful city. In fact, all of that stuff was really annoying. Um, so, yeah. Oh, we love Amsterdam. And speaking of which, let's head across to the Netherlands for a quick update from our Dutch host, our own Vanga boy. It's Crystal Connors. Here she is. Hey. <laughs> Crystal, we know that the Netherlands are back open for business. What are you looking for in a Eurodrag winner? Well, for the finals of Eurodrag in Barclays, ooh, I'm looking for amazing girls who are fearless, who are not afraid to show themselves, and who are very creative. I will look out for that, though. And the winner of the finals in Amsterdam goes straight goes straight to London to compete with all the other girls in uh, from Europe. So get yourselves into it. You might win a 100, no, you might win thousand dollars, no, euro. You might win a thousand euros. So start your engines and um, make the best woman win. If you would like to apply to Eurodrag for the Netherlands, Click on the link below. 
I also want to say thank you to my co-host today, Ada HD. It's been amazing having you on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. And a big thank you to Johnny Levy and Sherry Vine. We'll see you next week on This Alexia's After Party. to see my cuckoo again. <laughs> <laughs>